Hi everyone, um, so I'm just gonna make this video. It was not a planned video, but it comes straight from the Holy Spirit and I read something in the Bible this morning and it was just too good not to make a video about like the Holy Spirit is literally telling me to make a video about this. I feel it deeply in my heart. Um, and I just, you know, I don't think the enemy wants me to make this video, if I'm going to be completely honest. So I'm not going to keep talking, but I'm just going to get started on what I have to say. So basically, um, I read in 1 Corinthians 15 verse um, 19. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. And then... Um, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22 just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life so if you're not a Christian watching this I believe that God really wants you to watch this and I know you probably think that's dumb or something like okay whatever and you probably want to click off or whatever and I'm not going to force you to stay here but I would just like encourage you to listen to this it's not going to be a super long video it's going to be as fast as I can go so this is just a little bit of your time and you're completely welcome here if you're not a Christian. I literally make these videos for non-Christians and Christians, of course, for everybody. Everybody is welcome. No matter if you're, you're gay, you're Christian, you're whatever you are, it doesn't matter because I make these videos for everyone and ev I love everybody who watches these videos, no matter who you are. But I'm just talking about God who has given me the most true peace and joy. But if you've been stuck in like a hole of anxiety, and depression or just anything that obviously doesn't really come from God just like a dark lonely pit and you could be a Christian watching this and you're stuck in a dark lonely pit I want to just tell you the only way it's actually going to truly change is by applying the word of God to your life and this is something I've been like kind of like sometimes I'll forget this you, if you're feeling any sort of feeling, you need to apply what this book says to your life. That doesn't mean the enemy isn't going to come attacking you with feelings and thoughts. It doesn't mean that. And I'm, by the way, I'm not perfect whatsoever. I make mistakes basically every day because I'm a human on this earth and I've sinned. Everyone's sinned. Um, but, and that's, you know, like God loves us either way and it's okay to make mistakes. But the only way you're going to really see a result with Jesus is if you're taking this book, this Bible right here, and you're physically applying it to your life. That's what's going to renew your mind. Um, that's what's going to give you new life. And there is a verse in Isaiah or something. It's like, though someone, like, you'll be, just look it up. It's like being renewed by Jesus' word, Isaiah or something. But the only way that you're really going to see a change in the way you're feeling, in the way, like, you know, whatever is happening inside of you is by applying this book to your life. This isn't just some sweet book to, like, read and I'd be like, okay, great, but then just forget about it and go back to the way you feel. Despite what you're feeling, this book should be your truth. Like, not just, like, your truth. Like, this book should be your truth, your only way of living. This book should literally be the thing that defines your life. You have to be so in awe of this book and you have to be so aware that this book is the only truth. That's the only way it's going to change anything for you. And I'm just being honest because I know that's true for me. Because if I read the ver I, I read a good verse and I'm like, okay, great. And then two seconds later, the enemy might attack me with anxiety or the enemy might attack me with some stupid thought or something. And then I'll be like, oh my gosh, um, guys, what do I do? And I'll forget the verse and I'll go and I'll think on it. That, that's not going to change anything. You read the verse, but you didn't apply it as your truth. Say it's like, um, the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. That's, gosh, I know this. this is my life verse. Uh, one, two, crap. One Timothy 2, 7. I think I'm right. It's either one Timothy 2, 7 or two Timothy 2, 7. No, it's one Timothy. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Um, yeah. So anyway, sorry. Uh, but if you read that verse and then you're like, okay, great. God has given me a sound mind and not a spirit of fear. But then two seconds later, something happens and you're terrified. 
I'm not saying that those aren't human emotions, by the way. I'm not saying that you're never gonna feel that because it's literally just a human emotion. Like you can't like prevent yourself, but there's a difference between sitting in it and applying the word of God despite what you're feeling. Um, so instead of sitting around in that anxiety, you can go, no, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear and not, he hasn't made me timid. So I'm going to either way, despite what I'm feeling right now, I'm going to apply this verse and I'm not going to be scared. And that doesn't mean you're not going to feel the scared. No, obviously you can't control that. But when you start to use it as your truth, you're going to, the fear is going to start to go away because you're like, okay, even if I'm scared right now, my hope and my confidence is in God either way and this verse and this word of life. So either way, this is my truth. So like I said, um, yeah, just, I just want to tell anyone who's like watching this, God is the only way you're going to experience that new special feeling, the, the partying, the whatever you do that fulfills you, that might fulfill you for a little bit. But that's not going to fulfill you for life because those things are not eternal. But the word of God is eternal. And like I said, I'm like not perfect. Please don't get that from this video because I don't want anybody to think that. But I'm telling you, live with Jesus. Live with his, with his um, word as your firm foundation. And I actually have one more verse because um, this is basically what I'm talking about. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I love this verse because he talks about how you have to stand firm. And um, this is... Corinthians. Paul wrote this. Yeah. Paul wrote this. And I want to say something really quick and then I'm done. Promise. Okay. Um, Paul used to be a murderer before he was preaching all this stuff that I'm reading right now in 1 Corinthians. His name was Saul before. Saul was a bad person. He was a murderer. But Saul gave his life to God. God changed his name to Paul. And now Paul is out here preaching the word of God. So I want to tell you, if the enemy is attacking you, saying your past is too bad to be changed in Christ, absolutely not. God literally woke you up today because he wants to see you have new life in him. It's your choice if you want to do that or not. But God woke you up today because he wants to see you thriving in his word. So please never let the enemy tell you that your past is too bad to be changed new in Christ because God literally died knowing every single mistake that you would ever make in this life and still died for you, knowing that he loved you so much despite what you will ever do here on this earth. And he wants to see you make an impact on this kingdom. He really does. And the walk with Christ isn't just some easy weepity doo da da thing when you accept him into your life. I'm just going to be honest. There's going to be spiritual warfare. There's going to be lies from the enemy. There's going to be people saying, oh, you're so dumb and you're delusional that's just the way it is you got to choose the world or god but i'm telling you there's a difference between living for the world and living for god living for god is living in true peace because god is the one who created you and imagine how more peaceful life would be instead of feeling lost and alone imagine if you had a relationship with the one who made you he knows everything about you you say people don't understand you, but there's a man out there who died for your sins and got bruised to a cross for you. He literally pictured your very, your, your very face. He said you are fearfully and wonderfully made, made in his image. And he woke you up right now. You're watching this video right now. You. Yes, you. Because you have a purpose. And I'm not just glazing over that. God literally says, for I know the plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. That is the truth. I can't force you to believe it. It's something you got to do for yourself. That's another thing. I, I can sit here and I can talk and someone else could sit there and talk to me. But the only way it's going to change is if you genuinely desire to do it for yourself. So I'm telling you, if you apply God's truth to your life, it's just amazing. Life with God is amazing. So yeah, 
and honestly I partially made this video for myself so anytime I forget like that if I find myself relying more on my feelings than the word of God so I can come back and watch this like come on girl come on Let, let's let's apply this love love this is like a love letter from Jesus okay sorry this is turning into a long video it always does okay um it's only 10 minutes but like I know you guys got lives okay um anyways if you watch this video thank you so much for staying and um thank you for watching this I'm gonna pray really quickly really quickly over anyone watching this and yeah then I'm done okay um dear lord thank you so much for the person on the side of this other side of the screen lord I know that you have a plan and a purpose for their life and I pray that they would know that too lord I pray that they would know that you're not done with them you got on the cross and died for the dirtiest version of themselves. Nothing is hidden from you. You know what they've done, but you still love them regardless if they would just repent of their sins. So if a, per so if a person is watching this right now that doesn't know you but really wants to come to know you and live through your truth, Lord, I pray that they would say this prayer like after me right now. Dear Lord, Thank you so much for the life you've blessed me with and thank you for waking me up today. Lord, please just give me your peace that never leaves. I'm sorry for anything I've ever done, but I want to be made new in you because you are the one who renews strength. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. I want to live life with you now. Please speak to me and help me do that. Amen. Okay. I love you so much. So does Jesus, most importantly. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs>